when it comes to open houses, go big or go home. Today I'm going to be sharing with you how to host an open house, the best of the best of the best of the open houses. The best way. If we haven't met yet, what's up beautiful people? My name is Essence Regine and I create content on all things beauty, lifestyle, and real estate. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on your notifications so you never miss another video with me. This video will be slam packed with the tea on hosting a successful open house. So I need for you to grab a nice pen, a nice sheet of paper, and continue watching this video with me. Preparation is the most imperative thing that you can do in terms of hosting an open house. First things first, marketing. Also, if you have any great tips for hosting an open house, then drop them below as well because this is a collaborative space. I share with you, you share with me, and we just become one big happy family of sharing because we all know sharing is caring, so let's get into what we really came here for. Think of hosting an open house as if you're hosting an event. A family event you're hosting Christmas at your house you're hosting Thanksgiving you have a Friendsgiving whatever event but you're the host and you're inviting all of your family and friends because you want to celebrate so how do you get in contact and invite people that you do not know in regards to this video there's a lot of moving parts but all in all we're gonna get down to the nitty-gritty of how to host a successful open house as a new agent or an experienced agent First things first, make sure that this open house is posted within your MLS. Your MLS will then post it to the third parties, Zillow, Trulia. Then once that's done, go to your social media. So with social media, you can do organic and you can do paid advertising. Start with organic. You want to post in your Facebook groups. You want to post on your Facebook story, on your Facebook feed, and your Facebook business page. Everywhere, Instagram, Instagram story, Instagram feed, TikTok, YouTube, whatever social media you're on, take advantage and invite as many people as you can. As you're getting closer to your open house, you want to run paid ads. Now, paid ads allows for you to go from zero to 100 really, really quick and efficiently. The day before the open house, you want to put out your directional signs. It's important that you know the rules in your area though, because in different locations, there's different rules. Everybody don't just allow for you to put out signs and leave them up throughout the weekend. In regards to the directional signs, you're wanting to get the signs from the main road all the way to the house. A lot of agents recommend that you use 25 to 35 signs. You as a new agent, you probably don't have that many signs. You can always borrow someone else's signs that's willing to lend you their signs because think about signs in terms of marketing. They're going to see this person's face 25 to 35 times. So if they're not using their signs 9 times out of 10, another agent will allow for you to market with their signs. We need to learn as much as possible. And I say learn as much as you possibly can because, yes, you may be talking to a nosy neighbor or you may be talking to a buyer that just stumbled in. You may be talking to another real estate agent who knows the questions to ask you because they're representing and protecting their buyer at all costs. So you want to make sure you know that house from the top to the bottom, the neighborhood from the top to the bottom, the area from the top to the bottom. You want to walk into the house with confidence. You want the other people, your guests, to know that you know what you're talking about. Especially when nosy neighbor come in and they're wanting you to list their house and they're actually interviewing you and you don't even know it. Make sure you're on your A game whenever you're going into here because you're speaking to potential buyers. The goal is to get the house sold and that's just on what? Period. I always recommend knowing about the age of the HVAC, age of the roof, if the floors has been updated, middle school, elementary school, high school. You want to know the daycares that are in the area. You want to know grocery stores, anything in particular that may attract you to that area. Knowing general knowledge, knowing if there's an HOA for the property, um, the acreage that comes with the property. We need to learn any and everything about this house so that we can speak with confidence. We can walk into the room and actually own the room, control the room. It's easier to sell the property when you're confident about what you're talking about. And it's okay if, you, if there's something that you don't know, just let them know, look. I'm not sure about that. I'll check with the seller, but I can most definitely get back with you ASAP. And this is a perfect time to make sure that you're actually getting the correct number because believe it or not, 
buyers come through a lie all the time like they lie about having an agent they lie about their email address they lie about their phone number. and the day before make sure you have all of your documents printed all of your pens all of your sign-in sheets you want to have everything whatever system you choose to use whether that is an open house app sign-in sheet feedback form have those documents prepared the day before as well as the app make sure you know that it is user friendly you know how it operates before you go into your open house and set up your iPad or your phone or whatever you have them signing in on and if you're using sign-in sheet so on your sign-in sheet please be sure to capture the information as well as if they're using an agent so you want their phone number you want their email you want their first and last name and you want to know if they're using an agent a lot of people say they have an agent and they show up at the house without an agent it's like so why are you coming to the open house without an agent? Most buyers are used to people asking them, do you have a real estate agent? Yes. Okay, who's been showing them to you, you know? So that's another way to reword it and figure out, are you really working with somebody or are you just playing with me because you don't want me all up in your business? It's the day of the open house. It's time to host. It's time to put your hosting hat on. So let's get to it. On your way to the open house, make sure you grab some balloons because we want to drop as much traffic into this open house as possible. So if someone is riding by and they've seen 25 to 35 open house signs on the way and they see these balloons, oh, they know where the party is at. The first thing someone notices whenever they enter a home is the smell. If it stinks, I don't care if everything in the house is updated. I don't want it. Feeling fancy? Bake some cookies just to get that you know that aroma that nice smell and if you don't have that type of time make sure you keep a candle on deck light it you know make sure you grab your music we don't want no sad or mopey music we're trying to get them lit to buy this house so we want buying music shopping music on you know when you're going to mall playing anything that's going to get you sad they're not playing the keisha cole in the wrong way they got you in here wanting to buy and spend so make sure when you're playing music, it's upbeat, it's happy, it's swipe my credit card today, sign the, on the dotted line today. We want that type of music playing. And as I mentioned with the times that we are in, please make sure that you're providing masks, shoe covers, and hand sanitizer. Depending on your seller, they may require people to remove their shoes. So you always want to have an option for them to put on shoe covers. Or if they are having to remove their shoes, make sure there's a space for them to sit down so they're not hopping around trying to remove their shoes. Now the open house is jumping, the party is lit, the people are coming, what do you do? Make sure you give them space. You do not want to be all up on their neck when they walk in. Introduce yourself. Give them the instructions on what to do as they come in. Always get them to sign in prior to touring the house. Congratulations, the open house is complete. Let's go, hooray, turn up, it's lit. As the host, at least make sure you get one lead that you can follow up with and nurture and get them to the buying process. Maybe they actually need a sale, maybe they were a nosy neighbor. It doesn't matter as long as you have a one lead. The goal is to get one lead because sometimes you're at the open house and nobody comes. That has happened to me before. Now it's time to clean up the home, return it the way you found it, turn off all of the lights, close all of the blinds, make sure all of your doors are locked. To add a nice touch, you could always leave the seller some fresh flowers, some candy, or simply just a card thanking them for allowing you to host their open house, especially if it's someone else's listing. Follow up now. The key is in the follow-up. I'm not sure how cliche that is to you. People that told you that they didn't work with the real estate agent, you most definitely want to follow up with these people. They send them out a personalized message right after the open house because most people are going to wait until the next day. So if you sent them something that day, guess who's on the top of their mind? You are. You got the lead. Now the goal is to set up an appointment. Now, just because you send them a personalized message does not mean that they're going to respond to you. That has happened to me before. But do not let that discourage you because the same lady that did not respond to that email later on responded to my email. I was very persistent and guess what? It was a cash deal and it was from an open house. I did not know her. All I did was follow up with the information is taken and put it into your CRM, your database. For me, I use KV Core to then set them up on a campaign so that your system automatically emails them 
for you so it stays on top of the information and you don't have to actually think shoot I need to email Sheila I need to email Dave no your system is telling you what to do and you just gotta follow the system the house is under contract let's go so now we want to go tell all of those nosy neighbors that this house is under contract with multiple offers and guess what being that these house had multiple offers, you already have the buyer. You already know who's interested. So go ahead and brag to the nosy neighbors and let them know, yes, this house is under contract with multiple offers and I can have a potential buyer for your house if you are too interested in selling. The goal to doing this is circle prospecting, door knocking, but let the sellers know. Hype this house up and they may be interested now or later, but you still want to let them know. You want to stay top of mind. If you have any questions, please drop them below. And like I mentioned earlier, this is a collaborative space. Tips or tricks that you may know, please let me know them below too. Be sure to prepare. Be sure to learn a lot. And be sure that you remember oh, the real deal is actually building relationships. Regardless if you help them today, tomorrow, or two years from now. Please like, comment, subscribe. You already know the vibes over here. I'll see you in the next one.